Good morning and welcome. It is Wednesday the 12th of April 2023. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jenny McCormack. If this is the first time you've come across me, I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in the market town of Brackley, which is in Northamptonshire in the UK. If you joined me yesterday, you will have seen me um, create this little trio. So Dainty Delight is the stamp set that we have been using. This is my stamp set of the week. So what I like to do is pick a stamp set or a product and use that throughout the week to give you lots of different ideas with it. This is the stamp set. Good morning, Jeanette. And uh, we started off by making a card uh, at the end of last week. And then yesterday we created a coordinating bookmark, um, which I've got here. Hopefully you can see that. The sun's shining in beautifully. Very different to last night when I was live. And then we've got a name on the back. And then I created this little gift box to fit the Cabri's mini eggs. And then I just had an off cut and I made a little tag to go with it. So that's using the Dainty Delights stamp set and also the classic letters. And today I'm going to be using the dies that go with the Dainty Delights set. So there's a lot of dies in here. And they cut out, obviously, the elements from the stamp set, but they also cut out additional flowers. And we've got daisies, we've got stems, um, we've got what could be cow parsley, but also you've got other little um, flower heads that you can put on it. And I'm going to be using this one today. This makes a pretty, pretty wreath, but is a perfect... Um, background for some flowers so let me show you what we're going to create this morning this is the card that we're going to create hopefully you can see that morning uh, well good evening Glenda or afternoon Glenda from Australia <laughs> lovely to have you join us again so this is the card that we're going to create now it has got some background embossing I'm not sure whether this will get picked up on the camera so what I've done is I've stamped this white layer and then I have embossed it with our embossing folder that's called bricks and mortar that creates the um, the brick design and then pop that onto the card I've used that lovely dye in granny apple green for the stalk and then I picked out some of the daisies from the die set. The oval here is to cut out the sentiment and um, this curly bit of twine is actually created by um, unthreading a piece of braided twine because I was looking for my baker's twine, um, natural baker's twine, but I couldn't find it so I just split this and then sort of did a curling action. So that's our card, that's what we're going to recreate. Morning Catherine. I've gone for a different set of colours today, I've gone for Fresh Freesia. So I'm just going to start by showing you how I created the background. So I've got a base card and I've got a Fresh Freesia layer that I'm going to pop behind that. And I've just got an off cut of white and I'm just going to stamp over that first. And I think I'm going to use um, Fresh Freesia all over. Mm, I'm not 100% convinced. I was going to do Sahara Sand. Um, let's have a look. Maybe I'll do Sahara Sand for the backing. Let's find it here. Because I don't want it um, overpowering. So all I did was I actually used the stamps from Quiet Meadow. And this is a really useful set. It's got this broken up text and it's got these lovely dots as well as flowers and some nice sentiments. So I'm going to be using 
the words and the dots and if you want to stamp and emboss ideally what you want to do is in is stamp first and then emboss because if you emboss you've then got an un uneven backing for um, your stamping right let's have a look here just about fit on there take my glasses off and you can just about read some of these words so just make sure that you've got them the right way up and this piece is larger than I need I'm going to trim it down let's make sure it's yeah, taller as well I can see it's wider so I just got Sahara sand and just going to pop some words on like so if you've got any vintage style stamps they work perfectly for this Put another one in there, maybe at a different height, like so. So I'm hoping you can see that okay. It is fairly pale, that's what I want. Okay, and then I'm going to use the dots in between. I might stamp them off and have a look. So just a combination, stamped and not stamped, just to create a background. Now you could leave it like this. If you don't have an embossing machine, you could just literally create that background as is and use that. But just for added interest, I'm going to emboss that with our bricks and mortar embossing folder. Let me make sure I have it to hand. Okay, it's this one here. Came out in our annual catalogue last year, and it's got. Um, hopefully, you can see that. Let's put a piece of card behind it. It's got brick details, and it's a 3D one, so it has two different layers um, that it raises those two. So what I'm going to do is pop this in. Now, what you have to remember, obviously, is that you want your bricks to be going in the direction, in this case, of the text. Like so. And the side that has the Stamping Up logo is the side, typically, that would you would use for the front. Not necessarily. You might want it debossed. just going to pop that through the embossing machine. As I say, it's a beautiful morning this morning. Somewhat different to the rain we had last night. Okay. Let me bring that back in. Put my glasses on so I can see what you're seeing. Oh, jolly good. I could see I was pausing in the background, bizarrely. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see some of that embossing. If I angle it. So we've got the bricks. And then that other, um, the other detail on there. And what you can do is add a little bit more texture as well with a blending brush. And this can just bring out the embossing. Let's add a little bit more. I'm going to use Sahara sand. Just to give it that sort of weathered, weathered look. You could also add um ink to the embossing folder to make the brick stand out even further if you wanted to okay so i'm 
happy with that. So there's my background. Hoping you can see it okay. Oh good, Catherine says you can see. That is always good. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this down. Um, there isn't any any particular bit that's better than another, so I'm just going to trim this to nine and a half. And I can pop that on the inside of the card. And this is going to be cut to 13.85. And my plan is that will fit on there like so and then onto our card. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now before I forget, I'm going to punch out the oval from this backing piece because I want an oval around my sentiment and so I'm just going to push this as far as it will go so it's away from the edge like so and that should still give me the ability to pop that on and I haven't wasted any haven't had to cut up another piece of card basically Okay, this little strip is going to go on the inside of my card. Let's just trim that down now. Uh, let's make that like so. But it was just an off cut of card, so I don't know what the starting measurement was. Okay, so let's pop this together. I have pre-cut the greenery here and then I've got a series of daisies and I've just cut them out in white obviously you could um, cut these in multiple colours that would be really pretty and in the die set there is a die that cuts out four centres for the daisies and what I could do is use for example um, this piece here if I was being really frugal put the die on that little piece there to cut out the centers however what I'm going to do is actually just use my blending um, blends pen to color in the middles of the flowers so it's not as pretty as using the die cut do a couple of dark and a couple of light the actual die has got embossing in the middle so you get the little dots for the centers but when you cut out the center you also get the dots and I'm going to show you on my other card here These are hand coloured in. This one is using the dye. And I think if you didn't know, you wouldn't really spot it. And I've also added a little colour on the tips as well. So if you don't want to be um, fussy cutting those little ones, and not fussy cutting, you don't want to be die cutting the little ones, you can. colour them in and there is a die for these half so I haven't done a very good job with those okay I don't know how many I'm going to use by the way I just did as many as I could be bothered to all right let's just make that one a little bit more rounded Okay, 
So all I'm going to do is glue this down and adhere my little daisies. So there's plenty of little places that you can add glue. You could use our fine tip glue. That would be a really good um, glue to use because it's got such a, such a fine tip. I'm just going to use this glue so you can see where I'm putting it because the fine tip glue is clear. And I'm just dotting glue on the leaves. So, oh, sun's going in like that. So you just need the tiniest amount. You don't really need to do any of the stalks at all. Just going to put one on there, and you can cut these up. So you could make um, quite a big wreath if you wanted to, or just have lots of little bits of foliage. Okay, just going to hold that down, give it a chance to attach itself and then I'm just going to pop our flowers on. And you can, so these are quite fine so you need to be a little bit careful if you're manipulating them. Um, you can use an em, um, embossing tool in the centre on a mat. <coughs> Just looking to see if I have mine to hand. Of course, neither. Um, I'll, I'll put this one here. Oops. Let's just grab. So I've got a mat. There we go. So what you can do is. just add some pressure in a circular motion and that will uh, lift up the leaves as it presses down. You can do these individually as well to make them curl up at the end but just be careful because they are quite delicate. You want to go mad and break them off like so. You can just manipulate them in your hand if you wish as well like that or you can leave them flat but you can see the difference now obviously some of that will flatten in the envelope um, or you can just literally push the middle down so there's lots of different things you can do with the flowers and I'm just going to dot these around I don't think I had any particular um, plan So straightforward. Obviously, you need a die cutting machine to use these dies, and we sell a large and a small one. the mini okay um, put another one in here have I got on, on two three four <laughs> hmm that's an odd number actually if I put one here and one of my little little ones here at the bottom so, so say so just a, a dab of glue on the bottom. Don't go mad. Okay. So there we have our fresh freesia 
daisies. I'm not sure they really come in that order. Maybe a quarter inch punch. Quarter inch punch. Oh yes, that's true. Oh, for the centres. Actually, probably three eighths of an inch. Um, oh, even that might be too big. This one here. Let's just see. It's a matter of interest. We used to have a three eighths of an inch punch. Yes, even that's quite big. But it would still work. But you can, as I say, use the die to um, pop them out. I'm just being a bit lazy. So the die is this one here. It does two round ones and then two triangular ones. And the triangular ones are the ones that fit the half half daisy. I put it on here. Not that you can see much of it really. Okay, so there's my um, layer. I'm going to stamp a sentiment. And I could find a scrap of white. piece I cut the daisies out from and I'm going to use our double oval punch um, to punch out this piece and obviously I've already cut this one punched this one out and I think I'll have something a little bit more bold let's see um I've got go to greetings and just a note that might be too big. I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Oh, might just fit. So we're going to stamp that and then punch it out. That's always the best way round. So I've got a fresh free ink pad. I don't know whether this is going to be dark enough. We'll have a look and see. Oh yes, I think that will work. Okay, and I'm just going to trim this off. and put it in the punch from the side. I might need to trim it off a bit more. Oh no, put it in the punch from the side. Like so. So that's going to go onto there. And then that's all going to go onto there like so yeah I'm happy with that completely different colorway look makes it look quite different this is very more much more vintage feel with the Sahara sand now I do have some fresh freesia ribbon I'm not sure whether it needs it whether I put it across a little bit across there. I could do a little bit on the back, but actually I think because this is quite thick, I don't think it needs it. What do you think? Just try a little bow, see. Thank you, Glenda. Tracy, how are you? Thank you for joining us. I hope you're well. Tracy made, I think, was it 40? Oh, 
um, yeah, 40 um, crocheted crowns for the coronation. <laughs> right, I'm just going to see if this is needed. I don't think it needs one either, but I'll take a vote. Certainly doesn't need a lot of it. Okay, let's put this together and then we'll decide. So I'm going to put this layer down first and just use a scribble here of glue. I'm just going to put a little bit through there. Lay that onto there. And then this layer is going to go on next. You can see the embossing quite clearly on the back of that. Yes, so, and I thought they were just like thin crowns. Oh no. <laughs> You're welcome to put a photo up, Tracy, of these crowns that you've made for the coronation. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> okay. Let's just do that and score it. Okay, now I've got that little strip of card somewhere. There it is. Which I can just pop in the inside. It's a nice finishing touch and it saves wasting it. I could have cut the card to size to start with that I embossed. Make sure you've got the words the right way around. It's got a little border, so take your glasses off, Jenny. That's it. So that's the inside that you can add your sentiment, another sentiment to. So I'm gonna pop this one flat. And then my card layer going to pop up with dimensionals. I've just got some strips here actually that will do. And if you missed um, yesterday evening's session, I introduced our April Class in a Box projects. So there's a video for that, but if you want to see them, I can show you just the um, cards after, if you would like. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this here in that nice little sort of curve. Let's get it something like straight. So it doesn't look straight. There we go. And then the final vote is whether we want the, I quite like it with that, with the little bit of ribbon on, with the bow. Let me make it even smaller. So, I'll just see if you voted for the ribbon or no ribbon. Uh, thanks, Jeanette. Uh, ribbon on, says Tracy. Two that says no ribbon and one that says ribbon on. Woohoo! If it's on, it's going there. Well, I've made it. <laughs> so it's going on. 
Uh, that's if I can find my glue dots. There we go. Right, oh, I must order some more. They're getting very low. So just decide which you want the front to be. Push it on to our mini glue dot. And then pop it onto your card. There we go. Okay, so let's clear the decks a little bit so you can see. So this was my sample that I created last night. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so that one uses Sahara sand. And then this one here uses fresh freesia and I've just coloured in the centre so I cut them out in granny apple green and white I coloured the centres in this one but you could have used the die cuts and that's our finished card yeah I like it with and without there we go so thank you very much for joining me um as i say i do have the cards right april class in the box shout if you want to see them if not you can pop over to my youtube channel and you can see the video there of the papers and the um card project designs let's clear this away so that's Dainty Delight, so we've got one more in our series, so we'll be back here tomorrow, Thursday, 7pm um, UK time, for a, another session. Oh, hi Michelle. <laughs> Catherine says she struggles with those letter ones that are small, so the answer is make it big and then just make it smaller. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there we go. So, um, anybody want to see our cards for card class? Shout now. You're most welcome to Case Fran, absolutely. There's a thumbs up from Catherine. Okay, let me just show you the I'll just show you the cards quickly. So this is using the irresistible blooms, stamps and dies. And this um, class is in person. You can have the project box sent to you if you're in the UK or you can buy the videos and, and the online content separately. Um, so we've got this one here uh, with the gold die cut. We have a new fold, this one here. And all of my cards are designed to fit in a standard UK C6 envelope. So there's that one there, that one, they all, and they all stand up as well. I can't, um, I can't be doing with cards that don't stand up. Okay, then we've got this one here. These are taken from the papers. We've got a standard Z fold card. Like that. And again, that stands up really nicely. Um, this is um, this that other one in a different colourway, just to show you that. And then we've got, of course, a shaker card, like so. If you can see that, it says thank you in the background. I just lift that up. There we go. And that, they all come with envelopes. So that's our April card class and class in a box. Bookings open today. I will be sending out an email with the details. So if you want to book in for any of those and you're on my email list, you'll get that information. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Michelle. She's watching, but she can't hear me. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all done for today. So there is a video to talk you through the contents of the box, all the papers and things. Um, but you could utilise this with any papers that you've got as well. 
so thank you so much everyone um, I look forward to crafting with you again tomorrow um, and this is what we created today this is what we created yesterday so if you want to see how those were made whoops, um, you can watch the YouTube videos there's a little gift tag that I made out of the um, bits that were left over so thank you so much everyone do take care um, enjoy the rest of your morning afternoon or evening depending on when you're watching I'm off for a cup of coffee and um, I think I might just get out with Cassie and have a walk before in the inevitable um, rain arrives so thank you so much for joining me I appreciate your company and your support thank you bye for now